Hello, I'm Lewis and this is my newly designed WeatherBot. And in this video, I'm going to show you what this is and how you can build one of your own. This Wi-Fi WeatherBot automatically shows you the weather for where you are by arranging these four scene disks on top of the machine to create a small diorama illustrating the weather. The forecast that our WeatherBot is showing us at the moment suggests that it's going to be a cold day with some breezy wind, a few scattered clouds, and no chance of rain. The WeatherBot updates itself regularly using the free to use Open Weather Map service. This one has had its white parts 3D printed and the wooden discs laser cut using the Snapmaker 2.0. You can also 3D print the entire model if you'd like, like I've done with this one, using some bronze and gold effect PLA plastic. Below the top of our little forecasting theatre, you'll find a 2.9 inch e-ink display, which provides a more specific forecast for both today and tomorrow, without the distraction and brightness of a more traditional display. The WeatherBot is powered by a single USB cable, which makes it very easy to place wherever you'd like to see your forecast. Mine is here so I can see it on my way out of the front door. Now Snapmaker have very kindly sent to me their Snapmaker A350 2.0 to use whilst making this project. So all of the 3D printed parts I'm gonna run off this machine and later I'll also be using its laser function to create the scene discs and etch the details on them. You can still 3D print these for yourself if you don't have a laser cutter, but I really like the look of the laser cut birch plywood. You'll find the digital files for the 3D printable and laser cuttable parts down in the description below. To be able to build your own WeatherBot, you'll need a few items. You'll find links to where these can be found on Amazon in the description below. You'll need some filament for the 3D printing, four continuous rotation servos, a 2.9 inch e-ink display, electrical wire, an ESP32 microcontroller, four limit switches, some nuts and bolts, some three millimeter thick wood for the laser cut scene discs. Though you can also 3D print these if you'd prefer. To help keep the wiring in this project simple and easy to follow, I've designed a custom PCB. You can find where you can buy one down in the description below. The first parts that you'll need to print are four of these small cogs for the servos and the rear frame of the weather box. I printed mine in PLA as it is easier to work with. The cogs are simply push fitted onto the servos. We can then take these and use their included screws to attach them to our 3D printed rear frame. The wires are fed through the square holes in the pillars, which will also help you to figure out which way round to orientate them. Each of the servos wires can then be passed through the four holes in the bottom. Now we can work on the main axle which runs through the centre of our weather bot. To do this, you'll need to 3D print the four large cogs and our three spacers. If you're also going to be 3D printing your scene discs themselves, then if you change the filament at 2.8 millimetres into the print, you can help bring out the details as I have on these discs. Now, in order to make these three millimeter birch plywood scene discs, we're going to change the snap maker from its 3D printing setup to its laser cutting one. This involves simply changing the 3D printing module for the laser one and replacing the heated bed with some metal grid fins.
Now that we have all of the parts ready for our axle, we'll start putting it together. We're going to be using some super glue to join the pieces. Be careful where you apply it or you could seize the axle up and it won't turn as it should later. Start by passing our four cogs through one another. Once you have the four cogs nested on top of one another, give them a little bit of a spin and make sure they can turn freely. If they don't, you can use some sandpaper to help improve their fit. Add some glue to this little platform for the rain disc and then sit it on top ensuring it sits both horizontal and level. We can now take our first spacer and drop this over the top of the axle. Use a couple of dabs of glue to secure it in place ensuring they don't go down too far and then add the cloud cover disc on top of this. Again, ensure it's level. Repeat the same with the next spacer and the wind speed disc. Then follow this with the last spacer and the final temperature disc. You should allow your scene discs to fully cure before using it later in the project. But before then, give them a bit of a spin and check that they turn freely. If they don't, some glue may have found its way where it shouldn't be and you might still have an opportunity to make a repair. All being good, you can set this aside for use later. The next thing we'll do is start working on the front part of our main frame. The main frame for this project is quite a large print. It's going to need about 225 grams of filament to complete. There is no need for any supports on this. I've designed it so it can be printed without them. You just need to make sure that you have enough filament on your spool before you start the print. Whilst it prints, we can use this time to prepare our four limit switches. We're going to solder some wires to the normally open and common pins on the switches. On mine, these are labelled N, O and C. Solder a pair each of 19cm wires to two of the switches and to the other two some 16cm wires. The switches with the longer 19cm wires should be fitted on the left hand side and then the two with the shorter pairs of wires will go on the right hand side. By the way, this is the front of our print as this is where our display will go later. Use the 14mm long bolts to hold the switches in place. Feed the wires for each switch through the holes adjacent to their locations. Install each switch so that the roller is towards the top and the switch itself is on the front side of each pin. For easy access, I also recommend threading the bolt from the outside and adding the nuts on the inside, like so. Don't over tighten them though, leave them slightly loose for now. We'll also leave them at the bottom of their travel in their slots. Later we will adjust these heights when we start to tune our machine. Once added, we can flip the print upside down and continue threading the wires through their respective tunnels. So next we're going to work on the PCB. Now whilst I wait for the soldering iron to heat up, I'd like to say a super quick thank you to everyone who's made this video and project possible. That's this list of super amazing and kind Patreons and YouTube members, along with 3D Jake for providing the 3D printing filament, PCB Way for the PCBs, and Snapmaker, well, <laughs> for the Snapmaker. Thank you, one and all. If you'd like to consider supporting me and these projects so I can keep making them for as long as possible, then take a look at the information down in the description below. I'm going to be using a PCB which I've designed for this project as it makes the wiring much much easier as you'll see shortly. Now PCB Way will supply these directly to you and they have a great offer if you're a new customer. Take a look in the description down below, it doesn't cost as much as you think it might. We can start with our ESP32 which sits over this main area in the centre of the board here. Just push the legs through the holes and then solder it on reverse. Next are the 90 degree pins, which are added to the four lots of three around the outside of the board and the row of pins for the display. 
In the same fashion as the ESP32, you simply push the short end of the legs through the holes and solder them on the underside of our PCB. Finally, we'll add the wires for the limit switches. It doesn't matter which way round the pairs of wires go into the PCB. Now the numbers printed on the board correspond to the position of the switches, with the one closest to the front of our machine being number one, followed by number two, three, and four. The wires will be coming out of the same tunnels as mine, so your wiring will go in the same order as this shown here. There is also a wiring diagram linked to in the description if you'd prefer to consult one of those. Next up is our e-ink display and its included bundle of wires. If you check the reverse side of the display, you'll see that all of the little coloured wires are labelled. You should mimic these connections to the same colours on our PCB. Our PCB can then be held into place using three of your M2.5 by 8mm bolts. The display itself is simply pushed into place. It will be held down securely when we add a cover on top of it later. <sighs> Spoilers. <laughs> we can now take the axle that we made earlier and insert it inside the main body. To do this, you should line up the four discs with the notches found in the sides and the base of your print. Lower it into place and then gently push open the front frame so that the front of the shaft can fit into this recess here at the front. A 3D printable axle cap will hold all of this down in place using two M2.5 by 8mm bolts. You'll also need to make sure that the chamfered side of the arch is facing towards the scene discs. Now that we have both our discs and switches in place and together, we can go through them one at a time and adjust their distance from the scene disc. We need to adjust them until they engage and disengage at the correct time as the notches go past them. To do this, loosen the bolts underneath them and slide them either closer or further away from the discs. Tighten them a little bit, spin the disc around and check to see if it's making the right noises at the right time. Once you have it at the right distance, you should hear it click as it goes into a notch and click again as it leaves a notch. Now whilst we still have access to our ESP32, we'll connect our USB cable. We'll use this for uploading the code shortly and for powering the project itself later. Next up, we'll connect our servos via their wires to the 90 degree angle pins that we soldered to our PCB earlier. But just before we do that, I want to show to you the boot button on our ESP32. That's this one here. You don't need to worry about it now, but later this is the one we'll be pushing when we need to upload code to the ESP. This boot button will still be accessible later. You will just be accessing it through this hole here in the base. It's just easier for me to show it to you now. On our PCB, each set of three pins for our servos has a little white square next to one side of the pins. This is showing you which side the signal wire from the servo should be. Now on my servos, the signal wire is the orange wire. Here are some of the other commonly found combinations of wires on servos, which might match yours. Don't forget to make sure this is the same side as the white square when you connect them. Just like with our switches and the PCB, each point for the four servos is numbered. The numbering matches up with the switches one. So the switch number one monitors the disc that we turned around by servo number one. Don't worry if that diagram went by too quickly. You can always go back and pause the video there, but you'll also find I've put some links to the wiring diagrams down below this video. To fit this into place, carefully slide the mini cogs around the larger ones whilst watching they don't get caught. It's a bit like a physical puzzle. You should also keep an eye that the servo leads do not get caught up in any of the prints. We can then join the two together using an 8mm M2.5 bolt and nut at the top on either side and then a further 4 14mm M2.5 bolts from underneath.
Now, as we will be gluing our display cover on the front of our display using some super glue, it would be a good idea to upload our code and check that everything is working as it should. Before we do that though, there's a few libraries, board managers and tweaks to the code that we need to make before we can press that upload button. You're going to need to install a new board manager which will allow us to add in the board for the ESP32 if you don't already have it. You're also going to need a few libraries and there are a few bits to the code which we need to personalize for your own Weatherbot. All of this is available on my website diymachines.co.uk because this way it's easy for you to copy and paste anything you need to, follow links to resources and I can keep this up to date as we'll be using some third party resources such as the weather API and if they change anything I can revise the instructions. Once you've followed that though we can carry on here no problem. Don't forget that once you've finished configuring the software for your machine that you'll need to press the boot button to allow the code to upload. Once the code has been uploaded to your Weatherbot, the display should spring into life and show this splash screen. If it does, then yours is wired in correctly and we can take either your laser cut or 3D printed display cover, add a few dabs of glue onto the reverse side and pop this into place. Once the splash screen has come on, the weather bot is going to try and figure out where we are in the rotation of each of our four scene discs. It's going to do this by rotating them one at a time and timing how long it takes to detect each of the notches as it turns. It's going to store these timings in an array. When it gets to the end, it will look up the shortest timing in the four entries in the array and assume this is our homing pair of notches. These are the two which are closest together. We can then see how far back in the array we came across this and using this information we can infer how far around we are in the rotation of our scene disc. Once it's done this it will set this disc to the correct amount of wind, rain, cloud cover or temperature before moving on to the next disc and repeating this homing sequence. I really hope that you have enjoyed watching this video and do let me know what you think about this project down in the comments below. You'll find links to all of the information I've gone through in the same area down below the video and if you haven't yet I would really appreciate a like and subscribe if you wouldn't mind. I hope you have a fantastic remainder of your day and until the next project, ciao for now. Turns the rearest disc, rearest right. Rear wrist? No, <laughs> it's not a word. The first thing our weather will do, yours may be slightly different, and these are some of the more commonly worked patterns. <laughs>